So let's get back to the net backup installation. In the last video, we had difficulty launching the installed program, so we copied all these files to a new folder on the desktop. Let's go ahead and bring up um, a file browser. And let's look at this newly created folder called that backup. And let's scroll down and we'll see this install program, which is the same program we couldn't get to launch before. Let's go ahead and double click on it. And let's click on run. And this was the original problem, so we copied the program onto the file system, but it may or may not have been necessary. Let's go ahead and close this and minimize these extra windows. And what we may need to do is to launch the program on the command line. So if we do a ls to see the contents of the net backup directory that we created and the contents that was copied over in this previous section what we want to do is launch this program in order to launch a program from the command line we say dot slash install let's go ahead and hit enter we see something is happening. Semantic installation script installing NetBackup server. To install only NetBackup client software locally on this machine will need this different software. But we want the NetBackup server software so let's go ahead and hit enter for the default value of Y for yes. This package will install level 6.5. Do you want to reinstall? We'll say yes. We see something is happening. These paths represent files and different directories being created and files being copied over from the CD-ROM or the installation directory. Now it's asking us for a license key. And it tells us this is an evaluation license with this expiration date. Is this okay? And we'll say sure. All additional keys should be added at this time. We'll just go ahead and say no. Would you like to use the server name? This is the name I gave the Linux server when I installed it as the net backup server name. I'll take the default of yes. Later on, we'll go through the difference between master and media servers. So we'll say yes to the master server. I'll have no media servers separate from the master server at this time. And as you might guess, naming is very important to NetBackup. It must have the specific names of every client and server in order to identify and communicate with them. And here it's telling us the various steps in the installation process. As you get more advanced in that backup, you may want to pause this video and look at the individual steps, but this is really a quick and dirty install just to get it up and running and get a backup done. Do you want to start the process? Yes? BPRD is one of the various demons. And here we have a trace file or a log file that was written the file can be deleted after you're sure the installation was successful. And so, 
If this was an upgrade, we'd have to run this file, but it's not, so it's not necessary. And we see the script ended. So let's go ahead and look at what was done. That backup typically installs in user OpenV. And we see that this was done. Several directories were created and files. And one final thing before we end this video, we will go ahead and go to the desktop and install a driver for the robotic tape library. And depending on which library you have, you would have to install it. So I will use the RPM package manager minus UVH to install And so this was installed successfully. I could verify by saying RPM minus QA and grep for LTT. And we'll see that it was installed. And that brings us to the end of this particular video. And so the installation is pretty straightforward and on some distributions you may not have any problems but it was good for us to see the basic steps and techniques in troubleshooting installs in a Unix environment and the things that could possibly go wrong. That's it for this video.